Howdy ho, everybody. <clears throat> Excuse me. <clears throat> we just wrapped up a couple things in the previous video. Uh, what we need to do now is I'm going to look at sheet A311. And as some of you may have remembered me saying, these, um, these sections are actually looking kind of naked. We need to add some detail elements to these sections, basically to make them read a little better and be a little full so that we can actually see the things that are happening here. So <clears throat> what I'm going to do, I'm going to start here in this section through the brick wall. <clears throat> and uh, like I said, I'm going to be adding some detail items in here. So on the annotate tab, I will click on component. This is a detail component. <clears throat> and the first, now detail components, now you can see how my, my temporary uh, dimensions are, are trying to keep up with where my cursor is, but you can't see anything. It's because they're being placed outside the view. Once I move the view, then you can actually see the, the, the object here that I'm trying to place. I don't want uh, a W shape, which is a structural element. <clears throat> you can see there's not a lot there. There's just one W shape, the one structural steel beam, and then there's a few... Uh, uh, brick courses in here. We're not going to be dealing with any of that. So I'm going to click load family and this will allow me to load in a different type of detail uh, detail item. I want detail items. Wood and plastic. I want wood framing. <clears throat> I want nominal cut timber in section. I don't want rough cut lumber. That's something different. That's when you're doing outdoor redwood trellises and stuff like that. Nominal cut lumber is when you're doing wall construction, and that's what we've got going on right here. So nominal cut lumber in section. Click open. <clears throat> and just like with, with uh, certain window sizes and door sizes, uh, Revit is basically saying, look, there's a lot of options here. Do you really want all of them or do you only want some of them? Well, truthfully, I only want some of them. I'm going to highlight all of my two by sizes. So 2x3, 2x4, 2x5, 6, 7, 8, 10, 12. Actually, there's not a 2x7. There's no such thing as a 2x7. Okay, it's the 2x sizes are the only ones that I really want to load in. I'll click OK. So now this is nominal cut lumber in section and 2x3. I want to change that. <clears throat> I actually want to use a 2x6. And I'm going to start I'm going to zoom in here. I'm going to start down here at the bottom of my wall. <clears throat> now, in order to rotate this before I place it, oh, man, I've got to fix that. That's unfortunate. I'm going to push the space bar once. And you see that I've lined up. I've, I've used the intersection here of my, uh, of my level indicator, which is horizontal, and my grid line, which is vertical. And the reason I said I've got to fix this I'm going to left click. I'm going to go ahead and place this. Click escape twice. The outside edge of framing, so where my mouse is right now, this line on my exterior wall is what's supposed to line up with my grid line. <clears throat> now what's going on is they don't align, and I don't know which one happened first. It's possible that this grid line is what's actually in the wrong spot. That's a possibility. But that's got some really wide-ranging implications. Let me look at my ground floor plan real quick. Mm -hmm. All righty. So we were looking at grid line D. <clears throat> OK, so this wall is in the right spot. And that grid line is in the right spot. But if I come down over here, oh, see, there it is. The wall itself is in the wrong spot. Man, that is like so totally crummy because it's got so many things that are adding into it. Turn thin lines on. Oh, here you go. I've got a gap right there. And it looks to be about the same size as the distance that, that my wall is off. So, yay, I don't have to worry about things being really horrifically wrong. I will use my align tool and I will fix this problem. Select my grid, zoom in, highlight the align or, or hover over the line that I actually want to align, press the tab button until that line shows up. 
Now this is going to be this is going to modify quite a, quite a few things, unfortunately, and it it is what it is. Uh, you see, let's see if I escape. All right, you can see how the when I highlight hover over my toilet, my toilet is in the wrong spot, so I need to move him. I need to move him out just a hair. This is just one of those unfortunate things. It happens sometimes, and yes, you have to spend time running around fixing it all. I'm going to use, I'm just going to select all this with a window, just like that, and move that. It looked like it only needed to move half an inch. Yep, it only needed to move half an inch. That's good to know. And now I'll fix the bathtub. <clears throat> I'll do this with the Align tool. Select the edge of the wall, then select the bathtub. <clears throat> and just to make sure things are doing what I want them to do, I'll go to the second floor and I will fine tune the placement. Yeah, see that's off. All these are off by half an inch. So I'm going to select both of those, hold my control key, grab that, shift key, select the bath, zoom in, or the tab, or the, the tag rather move that endpoint to it intersects with the wall. It's such a teeny tiny little thing, <clears throat> but it's these teeny tiny little things that'll come up and it will bite you in the butt when you least expect it in Revit. It's just sort of the nature of the beast. Okay, back to my section through the brick wall. You see, now my wall lines up with my grid line so that this is in the right spot. Okay, I feel better about that. Sorry, uh, it seemed a very circuitous way to, to have to fix a problem in our wall section. Um, but that's sort of the nature of Revit. You have to go back and deal with things as they occur, and you can't always fix them where you think you need to fix them. <clears throat> so I'm going to highlight this detail item, and I'm just going to copy him from this top corner. Now you see how he's aligned on this inside edge here? Because this line and this line represent the wood framing line of the wall. This is the wood framing line as it runs across the floor and helps hold the wall in place. So I'm just going to copy him up until he, until he hits the uh, bottom of the windowsill. I'm going to make another copy from the bottom corner of this piece of framing. I'm going to just pan my way up the, uh, up the window. I'm going to place it here. Now I'm going to make another copy. And I'm going to place it right here. <clears throat> okay, you see how this this is our floor assembly. So this these two lines here represent the floor framing. I want to be right in line with that. Okay. Now one of the things that I ran into during class, and I'm going to double check it now, so if you're watching in the video, please let's double check this now. I've got my wood truss floor assembly highlighted. I'm going to click edit type. I'm going to click edit structure. Okay, structure is supposed to, is supposed to be 11 and a quarter, just like I've got right here. Turns out, uh, apparently during class, but not during the creation of the videos, uh, the structure was set up incorrectly. Uh, there'll be another way that we can check that, and I'll show you here and I'll show that to you in a minute. So I'll click OK, click OK. I'm done with all that. What I need to do at the top of all the walls, they actually put what's called a double plate up at the top. So they double up the studs here at the top of the wall. I'm going to take, I believe it's both of them. I actually have to open up my, uh, open my sheets here, my uh, PDF go by. <clears throat> yep, I've got doubles there. So I'm going to highlight both of these, both of these uh, uh, detail items indicating wood framing. And I'm just going to copy them up here. I'm going to change them from 2x6 to 2x12 because the 2x12 is what I'm using as my definition running through here. They're obviously oriented the wrong way. I'll use my rotate command. Rotate these 90 degrees. And then move them from this endpoint over here to this endpoint. And to make sure that they really line up, I'm going to uncheck constraint. There we go. Now, it's kind of hard to tell. I'm going to zoom in a little bit more. When I'm straight, 
it's going to want to snap to an orthogonal and I'm off only just a hair so as I move you can see how different items highlight to, uh, uh, to indicate what I'm actually snapping to. So I'm snapping to the endpoint of this horizontal line. I'm not snapping to horizontal or, or running straight into uh, perpendicular to that vertical line. So I hope you guys can spot the difference there. Now I want to make sure that those endpoints line up. And so when I select nothing, then I've got this big fat condition looking here. This is exactly what I want it to look like. Exactly what I want it to look like. Okay. I'm going to select I'm going to select that detail component, that uh, wood stud. I'm going to copy, and it's going to be bottom edge, just like that. Okay. And we're going to repeat this along the top edge. So we copy from top edge to the underside of the window. Then we copy from the bottom edge of that stud. I'm going to zoom out so I don't have to pan as much. <clears throat> to the top edge of the window and you see how those lines highlight that's letting me know these are this is the snap the intersection I'm snapping to there we go copy I'm gonna come across the top and I'm gonna go perpendicular to that second line <clears throat> and then because it's the top of a wall nope not move copy I'm going to copy it down like that. Now, I'm going to grab the both of these. Oh, I'm sorry, only one of them. Make one more copy up in here. I'm going to rotate him 90 degrees. I'm going to change him from a 2x6 to a 2x8 because our roof assembly is using a 2x8. And I'm going to move him. And he's kind of hard to see. I'm going to turn my uh, turn my line weights off. Select my item, move. I'm going to move them from this corner of the framing to that corner of the framing. So this is the condition that I want. And you can see these two lines indicate the thickness of the framing. So if in your model this doesn't the size of this piece of framing does not match up with the size of the thickness of your roof. The way to fix that is select your roof, click Edit Type, Edit Structure, and make sure that Structure 1 wood is set to 7 and a quarter. And then just make sure you okay your way out and it'll look just like that. I'm going to turn my line weights back on just because I like seeing all my line weights. Okay, <clears throat> I'm going to highlight this last piece of framing copy it. I'm going to start right here at the midpoint and drag it off until it intersects with the end. And to fake in a piece of wood trim that would close the end off, a nice pretty piece of wood trim, all I'm going to do is I'm going to move him back three quarters of an inch. And you see we have a little gap there. That's just, it's, it's a semi-decent way to fake in that we're putting a pretty piece of wood at the end of our roof instead of something ugly. Believe me, guys, there's a lot missing if we were doing this for an actual employer, but we're, we're just sort of going on, going on a few things here. Uh, this is school, and we're, I'm, I'm teaching you the basic premises. What's missing, because I want to add some more information here, and what's missing is I want to get some insulation in these walls. So on the Annotate tab... I'm going to click on insulation. And I need to specify the thickness of the insulation. I'm going to go across the roof first, and that's seven and a quarter. And then I'll draw it starting at the midpoint and just extend out until it goes past the end of the view. Left click, I'm done. I pressed escape a couple times to end out the command. I'm going to click insulation again, but I'm going to change the width to five and a half inches because that's the two by six thickness that we have inside the walls. So all I'm doing is filling in the gaps. Now strange as it sounds, people typically don't put insulation in the floor joists in here. People typically don't do that. The reason is is because they're running their uh, light fixtures in there <laughs> excuse me, their junction boxes 
are going to be in there. A lot of mechanical stuff will end up going through. There's some pipes go through there. It's just a whole lot easier to not have to deal with that. And if the entire exterior of the house is, uh, is insulated, then you don't really need to insulate the difference between floor and ceiling. You don't have to. Okay, so there's that. Problem solved. All this is completely wrapped up. Uh, this is adding some detail items to the brick wall section. In the next video, it's going to be adding detail items to the metal panel wall section. So I'll see you guys in a bit.